Okay, welcome back. This is part two of two of lecture seven. And we're going to pick up with trends in ionization energy. Ionization energy is the amount of energy required to completely remove an electron from a gaseous atom. Removing one electron makes a plus one cation. The energy required to remove only the first electron is called the first ionization energy. The second ionization energy is the energy to require the, uh, required to remove the second electron, and it is always greater than the first ionization energy. The third ionization energy is the energy required to remove a third electron. It is always greater than a first or second ionization energy. If you take a look here, you can see that certain elements lose their first atom very easily, our first electron very easily and others don't. If you take a look at neon, neon has a huge ionization energy. Why? Well, if you take a look at your periodic table, you see that neon is a noble gas. Same with helium. But if you look at the alkali metals, which is lithium and sodium, you'll see that the first ionization energy is extremely low. But the second ionization energy is concordantly high because the if it starts to lose a second electron, then it moves it farther away from the noble gas configuration that it's trying to achieve. The greater the nuclear charge, the greater the ionization energy. So in other words, if it's farther over on the periodic table, on the period, um, if it's farther to the right toward the noble gases, the ionization energy is going to be very high. The greater the distance from the nucleus, the lower the ionization energy. So it's just the reverse of the nuclear charge rule. In other words, if the electron's floating way the heck out away from the nucleus, it's easier to lose than the ones that are closer to the nucleus. Filled and half-filled or orbitals have lower energies, so achieving them is easier and results in lower ionization energies. So in other words, the more stable according to Hund's rule, the lower the, determ uh, the ionization energy. And the shielding effect can take place, which means that it protects the lower orbitals, in other words, the non-reactive orbitals. The electron on the outermost energy level has to look through all of the other energy levels to see the nucleus. The second electron has the same shielding if it's in the same period. As you go down a group, the first ionization energy decreases because the electron is further away from the attraction of the nucleus, so the nuclear effect is lower. There is a greater shielding effect in place as well, so that also lowers the ionization energy. The period trends are different. All the atoms in the same period have the same energy level, but they have the same shielding but there is an increasing nuclear charge as you move across the period, so the ionization energy generally increases from left to right. Exceptions to this rule are full and half-full orbitals. So helium has a greater ionization energy than hydrogen. Both elements have the same shielding since the electrons are only in the first level and they're on the same period, but helium has a greater nuclear charge. Lithium has lower ionization energy than hydrogen because there is more shielding, it's further away, and these outweigh the greater nuclear charge. Beryllium has a higher ionization energy than lithium, but it has the same shielding, but it has a greater nuclear charge. Boron has a lower ionization energy than beryllium because it has the same shielding, but a greater nuclear charge. By removing the electron, we make the s orbital half-filled and therefore more stable as well. You can see this trend continuing as we go across that period with carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, drops down again because of the half-filled orbitals, and then um, because it leaves with a half-filled p orbital, and then fluorine. Neon has a lower ionization energy than helium. Both are full, but neon has more shielding and a greater distance from the nucleus, so therefore it's slightly lower than helium. Sodium has a lower ionization energy than lithium. Both are S1s, but sodium has more shielding and a greater distance from the nucleus, therefore that electron is more easily removed.
And you can see this periodic trend keep continuing on in this series. And some of the ionization energy was one of the key components to identifying periodic trends as well and helping with the development of the table. Some of the driving forces is that full energy levels require lots of energy to remove their electrons. Noble gases have full orbitals and atoms behave in ways to try and achieve a noble gas configuration. For elements that reach filled or half-filled orbitals by removing second electrons, the second ionization energy is lower than expected. So this would be, exam for example, the alkali earth metals. This is true for S2s, and the alkaline earth metals form plus two ions. Using the same logic, S2P1 atoms have a lower third ionization energy. Atoms in the aluminum family form plus three ions. The second ionization energy and the third ionization energy are always higher than the first. Cations form by losing electrons. Cations are smaller than the atom they came from. Not only do they lose electrons, but they lose an entire energy level. Metals form cations, and cations of representative elements have the noble gas configuration before them on the periodic table. Anions form by gaining electrons. Anions are bigger than the atom they came from, but they have the same energy level. A greater area of the nuclear charge has to cover, so it's proportionately bigger. Nonmetals form anions. Anions of representative elements have the noble gas configuration after them on the periodic table. So you can see here that ionic size and atomic size increase in these directions. Ions always have a noble gas configuration, which means a full outer level. The sodium atom is 1s. 2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1, so it forms a plus 1 sodium ion, which gives it a 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 configuration, which is neon. Metals form ions with the configuration of the noble gas before them on the periodic table because they lose electrons. Nonmetals form ions by gaining electrons to achieve noble gas configuration. They end up with the configuration of the noble gases after them on the periodic table because they gain the electrons. Each step down a group is adding an energy level. Ions therefore get bigger as you go down because of the additional energy levels. And across the period from left to right, the nuclear charge increases, so they get smaller. Notice the energy level changes between anions and cations. Electronegativity is the tendency for, an, a tendency for an atom to attract electrons to itself when it is chemically combined with another element. It has to be chemically combined to be even talking about electronegativity, by the way. If they share an electron, how equally do they share it? An element with a big electronegativity means it pulls the electron towards itself very strongly. The further down a group you go, the farther the electron is away from the nucleus, plus the more the electron an atom has. Therefore, the atom is more willing to share its electrons, and it has a low electronegativity. In periodic trends, the metals are at the left end of the table and they let their electrons go easily, so therefore they have low electronegativity. At the right end are the nonmetals and they want more electrons to achieve that noble gas configuration. So they try and take them away from others and they have high electronegativity. Therefore, in electronegativity, they increase in these directions as you go up the groups or across the periods. The most electronegative element on the periodic table is fluorine. So you do need to know that. Anytime you see fluorine involved, you know that it's extremely electronegative. Okay, this is a lot of information on periodic trends, but you do need to know it. Make sure you understand IE, energy, atomic radius, the bondings, the types of ions that are formed, and the general characteristics of the groups and periods. If you have any questions, please review, first of all, lecture six, which was on the electrons in the atoms and how they fill up the orbitals and so on. And then make sure that you review this, um, this section as well, because it will come back multiple times throughout the semester. 
Okay, if you have any questions, see me during office hours, and I hope you have a fantastic day.